So if I let my mind wander, the odd tear will fall down my face. I know that last night, in your room, cocooned by the low clouds and the headland and the streetlights and the stars, there was the sound of your ananoidal children sleeping. I know we found peace. My fingers will rift through your short and soft and clean hair. I will taste the taste of almonds and cinnamon and sugar. I, I will feel joy beyond relief. And songs such as no radio will ever play will spin and reel. We, we kiss to keep warm. And at dawn I go out into the grey light, half awake, shaken, stuffed, doomed, down the tubes. Exultant, exultant, you light a fire on a nearby beach. You write the names of ex-lovers and ex-wives and past lives, one to fourteen. You read the list, you read the list to the wind. You read the list to the wind three times and then you burn it full stop. End of poem. Oh, I've obviously got a checkered past. My parents came here on a boat in 1960. Uh, five pound POM immigrants. My, my mum and dad were both Marxist, unionist POM stirrers. Not a very popular thing in New Zealand in the 1960s or for most of the 70s or most of the 80s even. So my childhood consisted of moving every six months from one small dairy farming town to a butter factory town to a paper hydro dam scheme town to a casein factory manufacturing hoo-ha, those sort of places all over the central North Island where dad would slave away and then get punched out at work and we'd have to move. So that's, that's, by the time I was 13, we had settled in Maungari. Uh Dad was working as a maintenance fitter on the shit ponds out at Maungari. And I was attending uh, Manukau Intermediate uh, in Royal Oak. Just saying. It's called Here Comes the Colonel. When I was 11, and I was still a lad in shorts, I walked twice daily past the site of the first ever Kentucky Fried Chicken joint in New Zealand. It was at Royal Oak, and I was at intermediate school. I watched in awe as it was built, the now familiar, but at that time architecturally unique pyramid-shaped roof with its gaudy red and white striped paint job. I remember laughing at the cut-out life-size figures of the Colonel. Anyway, on the day it opened, there was a queue of people stretching around an entire city block, keen to win prizes of Coca-Cola and coleslaw. The police watched as scuffles broke out amid the noise and fumes of Auckland peak hour traffic, but inside it was much more relaxed. Full stop. End of poem. A couple of short ones. <clears throat> this is called White Wear Rustlers, South Dakota. No sheriff had been found game or dumb enough to rid the county of the wild Hissock boys. I'll repeat that. No sheriff had been found game or dumb enough to rid the county of the wild Hissock boys. They were banditos who rode into town across the border and stole whiteware. Washing machines, fridges, freezers, tumbler dryers, and the odd dishwasher as well. In the town, people cowered behind their wardrobes because they knew, they knew, Nothing was going to save them when those wild Hissock boys rode into their town with rustling white wear on their minds. Full stop. Hmm. 
Not many people notice. Not many, many people notice the shadows under trampolines, the fine grey and white mesh with the darker black blobs of happy children bouncing upon it up and down. So, it's not just the young lovers that I notice passing and stopping mid-flight in a crowd. I see them exchange soft, biting kisses. I watch him flick a gentle palm across her nipple. I watch her slip a hand down the back of his waistband, of his trousers, full stop.